saw him we are not following cunningly devised fables but this is from a more sure word of prophecy a more sure word of prophecy or it can be said like this a prophetic message or a prophetic word same word brother paul used in romans 16 26 same word but now is made manifest and underlined by the scriptures of the prophets by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god made known to all nations for the obedience of faith so when peter said a more sure word of prophecy what was he talking about what was he making reference to huh which scriptures the old testament okay the old testament so if i'm going to interpret that word more sure word of prophecy i will call it written prophecy written prophecy because the next verse is now explains second peter 1 19 written prophecy we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No written prophecy. That is what he calls the prophecy of the scripture, which means the Old Testament. No written prophecy or no scripture prophecy of the scripture which is old testament is of any private the word private is the greek word idios i-d-i-o-s idios it means no prophecy of the scripture stands alone no prophecy of the scripture stands alone which means scriptures are interpreted together scriptures are interpreted together meaning no scripture stands on its own private or alone in other words all the scriptures are interpreted together all the scriptures you can't take a verse out mm -mm. it is contextual it is interpreted together what he's saying is that all the scriptures converge in the same place okay so no prophecy of the scripture is of any private is not alone the word interpretation i love that word is of any private interpretation is the word epilusis e-p-i-l-u-s-i-s epilusis that is the word for interpretation the word epilusis means it is used for solving problems so it will go like this no written prophecy or no prophecy of the scripture is of private explanation no prophecy of the scripture is a stand alone explanation but prophecy of the scriptures are explained together so he's saying that the scriptures are centered around christ no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation mean it does not stand alone or it's not on its own just like jesus said in john 5 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but they are there all of them put together testify of me no scripture stands alone they will only be useful when they are brought together to an end to reveal Christ. They will only be useful when they are brought together to an end to reveal Christ. That word is epilio. It means to interpret or to decide. So the next thing he now says in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So Peter said, I saw him. I was with him. 
But there's something much more reliable. The written word. I saw him. I touched him. I felt him. He spoke to me. We ate together. But there is something much more reliable than visions and dreams and experience. It is the written word. Now, so if he tells you that Paul has a peculiar insight, if Paul had a peculiar insight, a wisdom, this peculiar insight will not be Jesus' parable. So this peculiar insight will be the Old Testament concerning Christ. The Old Testament concerning Christ. So Peter's eyewitness, therefore, is biased. Because when Peter saw Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, he said, let us build three tabernacles. Three tabernacles. Let's have a church where three people will be preaching. This Sunday, Moses will preach. Next Sunday, Jesus will preach. Another Sunday, Elijah will preach. Powerful church. You know? We pray the God of Elijah bring down fire. We bring the law of Moses. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, may you not die a common death. Then we bring Jesus. Grace is available to all of you. And you know that's how many churches are. They have a combination. It's a variety church. It's a corrupted, corrupted pollution, contamination of the truth that is in Jesus. Three people are preaching in those churches. Three spirits. Spirit of Elijah, spirit of Musa, and the spirit of Jesus. Three of them. You know, Musa is uh, <laughs> Musa is fallen die. If I be a man of God, may this ground open. Bam! Miriam, how dare you talk to me like that? Take leprosy. Mose, Mose. Three tabernacles. Peter wanted a complete church. Jesus is not enough. Jesus alone is not enough. We must add other things. We must add Moses and Elijah to balance Jesus. After all, they were there before Jesus. Combination therapy. When they pray, they pray like Elijah. When they pray, they pray like Elijah. When they preach, they preach like Moses. Eh? When they do wrong, they ask for forgiveness like Jesus. When they have done wrong, they say, Father, you know you're all merciful. But when it's prayer, fall and die, fall and die. Anyone that will hinder you from progressing, may he die. You may be the person hindering yourself. You may be the person hindering yourself. Something you are supposed to do, you have not done. So it has stopped. And then somebody say, may he die. And you are shouting, amen. And you die after two years. And they say, why did God kill him? Oh, God has suffered in the hands of religious people. Moses. <laughs> Elijah. Elijah.